friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Katie and this is Catherine the 19th. Today I want to talk to you about my favorite vlogging camera ever, which is the Sony RX100 Mark IV. I haven't had a chance to try the Mark V so I can't compare that, but I really enjoy the Mark IV and it is less expensive so that's ultimately why I went with it. The amazing thing about the Sony RX100 cameras is that there is so much you can do with them to customize it to your exact needs. Some people use it as a photography camera, some people use it for video, a lot of people use it for vlogging because of that perfect flip up screen. And so because there are so many varied options, it can be kind of hard to know at the beginning what you should do with it because there's just so many things to customize and change. So I've been using the Sony RX100 for a straight month now, quite intensively filming vlogs almost every day. And so I've gotten a chance to figure out what kind of settings I find are most convenient for vlogging. And so today I thought I would make a video to show you those settings. So I'm gonna show you how I've mapped out my buttons and um, just some tips and tricks for using the Sony RX100 for vlogging. Um, one quick tip that I would give before I even jump into all of the buttons and mapping and stuff like that, is to add a screen protector. You might notice my screen looks a little dingy. I actually fashioned an iPhone uh, 5S screen protector uh, to fit this screen. Um, it apparently scratches really easily, so that might be something you wanna look out for. So we're just gonna go into menu, and as you can see, there are a ton of options from the get-go. So we're just gonna start out under the little cog here on the fifth page, and you'll see that we have the um, custom key settings option here. So this is where I like to start because this is how you can map out the buttons on the back of your camera um, to do exactly what is gonna be most convenient for you while you're vlogging. I have the control ring set to exposure composition. The control ring is this bit on the front which can work for focusing or for changing the exposure. So if I go into uh, video mode here, you'll see that when I change the when I move the ring, then we see the ex the exposure composition changing. And basically this is just like if it's overexposed or if it's underexposed. To change the actual aperture and shutter speed and all that is a different um, function. The next customizable option is the C button, which is just down here in the bottom right corner. And this actually gives information. It's the in-camera guide. So if I just tap it now, you can see the C button assigns desired function to the C button. So anytime that you're in the menu here, you can just hit the C button and it will explain to you what it does. So I've just left that as is because I'm still trying to figure things out. Um, and I think that it's useful to have that little guide there. So next I have the left button, which is this right here where my thumb is. And that is what is going to toggle auto to manual focus. So the reason I've chosen that, if I pop into video mode here, I can choose between autofocus and manual focus really easily while filming. And that's super useful if I wanna do some sort of rack focus. Or the other thing is that it actually also kind of secondarily toggles the um, focus ring here. So if I have it in autofocus and I start moving the ring, that's gonna keep it in exposure composition, which is a pretty useful function. But if I pop it into manual focus, then that becomes my focus ring. As you can see, I'm moving it and it's going in and out of focus. So I find that mapping the left button to auto and manual control toggle not only toggles between auto and manual focus, but it also toggles the use of this um, control ring right here. And then finally for my right button, I have it set to ISO. So in video mode, I can just hit the right button and then I can change what my ISO is, which is really useful. For the most part, when I'm vlogging, I am going to be shooting in full manual mode. And so what that means is all I have to do is hit the um, down button and that's gonna allow me to change my shutter speed. And then if I hit the down button again, then that will allow me to change my aperture. So all I have to do is hit down and then start scrolling to do shutter speed, hit it again, and start scrolling to do aperture. And then, um, once I have that set, all I have to do is hit the right button and I can change my ISO. So basically, that's just a really simple way to have all three of your exposure functions in a really accessible place. So you just hit down for shutter speed, down again for aperture, start scrolling, and then hit the right button to change your ISO. So I find that really useful for shooting in manual on the go. If I wanted to start shooting in manual focus, all I have to do is hit the left button 
and there I go. If you are a new vlogger looking to use the Sony RX100 and shoot in full manual mode to have total control over your exposure, your focus, all that kind of stuff, which is really the beauty of the Sony RX100. If I was looking to just do totally auto everything, I would continue to use my cheap Panasonic camera because it's great for that. But this allows so much um, customization and so much control over exactly how your video looks. So I think it's really useful to have the control ring set to exposure composition. Then you get that left button to auto manual focus toggle, which also conveniently toggles the use of this um, control ring up here. And then you get your right button ISO and you have a full, very accessible um, manual setup for this camera. So another tip relating to shutter speed, which if you've been watching my vlogs for a while, you might have noticed my struggle with this recently. When you first buy the Sony camera, it is going to be in the PAL setting, which basically means that its automatic options for frame rate is going to be 25 and 50. If you live in North America, you might notice that it creates this sort of weird... Um, line situation. I, it's hard to describe other than just by looking at it. It doesn't play well with the lights here. Our lights kind of flicker at a different frame rate than this camera records. So to fix that, I just went in and you select um, NTSC, which is what I am in now, so I'm not going to change it. But if you switch to NTSC, then you will be able to shoot in 30 frames per second and 60 frames per second. This is a super useful tip. Shout out to Dan for helping me figure this out because I did not know until he went digging on the internet. Um, and this will make it so that you can shoot in 30 and 60 frames per second, which will basically eliminate any issue that you might have with um, the lights flickering in your videos. So that's it. That's basically how I've set up my Sony RX100 Mark IV to be the perfect camera for vlogging. I hope you found this useful and interesting. Let me know in the comments below what camera you use for vlogging and um, if you like it or not. If you have any further questions about customizing the Sony RX100, let me know. I can help you work through it, hopefully. Um, and thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Comment below if you have any questions and subscribe for future videos like this and daily vlogs and other helpful tips and tricks about videography. As always, I love you all. I hope you're following your dreams and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Areas in YouTube in which I want to improve or my YouTube insecurities. I think it's good to talk about goals and about stuff that we want to improve and to admit like, I mean, it's pretty obvious probably that I'm not perfect, but like if you're watching from the outside, you don't always know what the person is working towards or what they think they could do to improve their own stuff. And maybe it could give you an idea of stuff that you could do for your YouTube channel to continue to grow and learn because that's what I'm all about here. It's not about having the views or the subscribers. It's about learning, getting better at making videos, getting better at photography, getting better at design, whatever it is you do, and being proud of your own work.